When this news broke, it was earth shattering. It was a terrific day for astronomers all across the world. Five years later, the planets remain a mystery. NASA has made an extraordinary discovery in outer space. The planets are around the same size as Earth and orbit a dwarf star close to our solar system. It is the closest scientists have come to discovering planets capable of supporting life. What exactly does that mean? Are some like Venus? Is there any cloud cover or even surface water? Well, stay tuned to find out. On February 22, 2017, NASA announced the finding of TRAPPIST-1, the star with the greatest number of Earth-sized planets identified. The planets are all around the same size as Earth, as was already mentioned in the video, but only three of them seem to be in what scientists refer to as the habitable zone. What exactly is a habitable zone, you might ask? The habitable zone is the region of space surrounding a star in which a planet is highly likely to have liquid water on its surface, which is a necessary component for life as we know it on Earth. It is around 40 light years away from Earth, and how far is 40 light years away exactly? Well, if we were to use our current propulsion technology, we would be there in about 800,000 years, meaning we still have a long way to go. The record-breaking planetary system is the first to have three Earth analogs in its parent star's so-called Goldilocks zone and the first to comprise seven such worlds. TRAPPIST-1 is a fantastic dwarf star that implies it is considerably smaller and just around half as hot as our Sun. To give you an idea, if the Earth's Sun were the size of a basketball, TRAPPIST-1 would be around the size of a golf ball. In fact, the entire system could fit inside the orbit of Mercury our innermost planet, and there's virtually little separation between the seven planets. The structure is like anything we have on Earth, and what makes this region even more fascinating is the fact that if you're standing on the ground of one, you might be able to see the others in the sky, similar to how we view the moon. How cool is that? Just imagine looking up into the sky and we could see other planets, and this discovery opened the door to a world of opportunities. Imagine how many planets exist that have a chance of becoming a sustainable system that could very well explore and investigate. The newly launched James Webb Telescope will be a true game changer though. Webb will examine TRAPPIST-1 planets for indications of atmosphere. As we all know, the Webb is larger and more potent than any previous space observatory, but more on that later in the video. This fascinating star system was originally analyzed by Belgium's Transiting Worlds and Planetismal Small Telescope, or TRAPPIST, an observatory in Chile, back in 2016, but at that time it was only thought that they had about one or two habitable planets. Okay, so when it comes to giving the planets names, we feel like the naming committee got a little lazy on this one. After all, we are used to hearing the names sound like they were created for Star Wars. But sorry to disappoint, they are currently known as B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. And even though they are all the same size as Earth, they have a much shorter orbit. As we recall from primary school, our Sun orbits the Earth in around 365 days. But the longest orbit on a TRAPPIST-1 planet is only 20 Earth days. The shortest one is about a day and a half. Our planet rotates continually, bringing us day and night. But scientists believe that TRAPPIST-1 planets are stuck in place, with one side permanently facing the star and the other always facing away. That implies that one side is constantly in the sunshine and the other is always in darkness. If this is the case, the planets might experience really strange weather patterns, such as powerful winds and dramatic temperature fluctuations. The planet in the inner habitable zone is around the size of Earth and gets approximately the same amount of light which might result in the surface temperature being quite comparable to our planet. The middle planet in the habitable zone, circling TRAPPIST-1, receives roughly the same amount of light as Mars. However, the furthest planet receives the amount of sunlight that one would expect to see halfway between Mars and the asteroid belt. However, for a better idea of how the place may be, an artist provided us with a TRAPPIST-1 depiction, which brings you to the third surface from the red TRAPPIST-1 star. How amazing is that? And from here, it's like a mini adventure because you can see the loom, which is larger than our sun and emits a crimson glow across the sky. However, it is yet unknown if any of these planets have atmospheres or liquid water, and further observations as well as extended research to find planets around other dwarf stars are needed. That's where the James Webb Space Telescope comes in. The Webb will search for indications of atmosphere on TRAPPIST-1 since it is bigger and much more powerful than any previous satellite observatory. But before we use the Webb, it's important to pay respect to its predecessor, the Hubble Space Telescope because it was also instrumental in the early research. More data on habitability was added by measurements made with the Hubble Space Telescope. Even while Hubble lacks the ability to evaluate planets that have potentially livable atmospheres, it has discovered that at least three of them, planets D, E, and F, appear to lack the puffy, hydrogen-dominated atmospheres of gas giants like Neptune in our solar system. A suitable atmosphere would also be necessary for a planet that may be habitable. 
and Webb is expected to only be able to infer the presence of an atmosphere in part during its early observations. The TRAPPIST-1e planet, which is the fourth planet from the star, is one of Webb's main targets. It is located squarely in the center of the habitable zone, commonly referred to as the Goldilocks zone. It generally refers to the orbital distance from a star where there is sufficient warmth to allow liquid water to exist on a planet's surface. If you're wondering how they compare to Earth, let's start with size. The argument for habitability is strengthened by the size of the planets, although much work has to be done in this area. Second, they aren't merely comparable to Earth in terms of its mass and diameter, scientists were able to calculate the planet's likely range and mass from their gravitational effects because of how tightly they are packed. And based on that research, it seems that they are probably rocky planets, but we'll have to wait for further research into the atmosphere and liquid. After telling you about the optimal viewpoint, let's go on to a different perspective. Some scientists think that it's extremely unlikely that water will be discovered on the surfaces of TRAPPIST-1's three innermost planets and that even if water were discovered on the surfaces of other four planets, it wouldn't be a lot. However, this new study challenges the conventional notion that water must be prevalent on low-density planets like these. Therefore, several issues arise, such as how Earth-like and livable the seven exoplanets may be. And taking charge of this new study is an astronomer named Martin Turbet of the University of Geneva. He said that by merging the planetary atmospheric models they had at the University of Geneva with models from the universities of Bern and Zurich, they had been able to assess the water content of the seven planets with an unprecedented degree of precision. He went on to state that their first calculations indicated that the three inner planets most likely did not have any water at all, and the other four, if they do, must likely have very little. Okay, let's try to simplify the explanation. The eight planets in our solar system have a wide range of densities with the terrestrial planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, being more dense and the large gas and ice giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, having a lower density. And because the seven planets in TRAPPIST-1 are known to have very close densities to one another, this has raised several concerns among scientists when compared to Earth. Because the scientists from before need to reevaluate their calculations if any of them actually contain water. After hearing different points of view, do you think they actually are Earth-like? Or do you think we're just hoping that they are? And how long do you think it would take to really locate a planet like Earth that could support life? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.